Hi everyone, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. Today we're going to do the Ferragineus Hawk. Uh, this, well, I'm planning on it. I have a couple reference photos and I have a really nice kind of a landscape kind of thing behind him. Just very simple. Uh, but we're, and I'm not sure yet exactly how much detail I want to paint to him. I've never painted him before. I've, ne I've painted hawks and stuff, but I've never painted this type before. So I thought it's, you know, like when I do teaching videos, I like to do things I've never done before with you. So you can see the thought process of how I begin uh, some of my, uh, some of my paintings. Now, to start out with here, uh, onto the background, I took some uh, gray, some light gray, Premixed light gray, but it's it's basically black and white and a tiny bit of yellow. It's a value eight, and then I added a little bit of, of uh, medium white to it. So if you're going to make it by yourself, take black and white and a little bit of yellow oxide, just mix those together. Just make kind of a nice gray up around a value between a value seven, value eight, somewhere around there. That'll give you a nice starting point for the painting. Now before we get going into here, let me talk a little bit about our colors. Um, I'm going to be using uh, some of my colors when I put out my global colors. This is how I, I keep them out, and I have a whole palette of them over there. Uh, but I'm also, this right here is one of my mixing charts that I use here for um, uh, for landscapes. And it gives me, these are really uh, great colors that I found for more contemporary looks of landscapes that I like to use. And... Uh, especially on the Fergus Hawk. Now, I have a picture here of him. I've sketched him. I'm going to use this picture as a reference. I've sketched him up in a different uh, profile, but uh, uh, this one is, is kind of nice. I can get some coloring off of that. He has these real beautiful burnt sienna, and I want to go down to this violet color. So this color that I use as a base in landscapes will work very well as a nice dark color. I might put, in to put out some real cool red violet. But uh, we'll leave the others just right over there for right now. And maybe a little cap of extender. So this is the kind of process that I go through when I'm deciding here. Um, you know, I'll look at, at the particular hawk. I'll look at my background. I'll look at the kind of mountains and stuff that I want to have and the colors I'll play against. Now, for today's painting, I'm also going to be painting on glass. Some of you have seen this in other videos. Okay, I paint up onto the glass. Underneath the glass, I'm put today I put my value scale there. Sometimes I'll move my colors, some of the colors right up here. Sometimes I'll divide up my warm colors onto one side, leaving my cool colors over here to the, the other side here. And uh, that works really, really well. These are nice mountain colors right there. So I have a nice working area for how I'm going to, um, you know, approach my painting. So the first thing that I want to do is go in and uh, come in and start to set in some of this sky now down that's the other thing is you got to remember these will dry down so um, you know keep your colors keep your colors a little lighter than in, in expression than what you think it needs to be now I've got that kind of loaded up nice and thick into uh, my brush here and I'm just going to come through and put in some of this and I can lightly go over the edge of my mountain. One of the things is it's it's kind of a, a good thing to do. You can come back here and and uh, you know push back a little bit or you know put this on more uh, just a little bit thinner if you want a little bit of that gray to show through. Um, that's always a good call to do too. You know when you're first starting a painting is to apply it just a little bit thinner here. So there's a I got a little bit of a Hey, a rock and roll there to that. I want to stop that here. So let's just come right around. I don't want to when you're when you're coming up here against the I mean against the hawk. Sometimes I'll just go like that and just wipe off, which is really kind of a good way to do it. But uh, if you do paint around, you know, so that you don't avoid your sketch, I mean, so that you don't disrupt your sketch, you do paint around. Make sure that you don't develop texture. You don't want anything, any kind of texture in these first layers whatsoever because that will hinder us in our painting, okay? All right, I like to take that off to the color a little bit so a little bit of yellow in there would actually be better. Just a little bit of warmth, the light hitting that cloud there. I want to keep this cloud very wispy and very playful. Uh, I don't want to really develop too many edges or building part of the cloud because that will interfere with the uh, 
with the uh, what my plans are with this this hawk so I want to keep this just very uh, airy here just light and airy like that and uh, a little bit more color here just build I want to build though I want to build that cloud but you know it's it uh, you know how much we actually build we don't know yet because we haven't got our center of interest or our idea here let's just drag a little bit out there let some of that just kind of get playful here out like that uh, set that in now if we start out with let's start out first with a lighter color here so I'm going to take my lighter color I mixed up here my mountain color let's darken that down a bit let's add just a bit of blue to that now I add either either a burnt sienna or a raw umber to this to darken this down a, as well just a bit I want it slightly on the blue side and I like to keep this uh, mountain color uh, when I'm when I'm doing it here up a little bit higher like around a value 8 or so and I want it slightly just ever so slightly blue here so here just blue just a little bit more of this color here and but you see all these colors that I'm doing in here like this and modeling in here burnt sienna blue some of my darker violet and my light violet here I'm modeling in to get kind of this grayish mountain color that is a little dark right now it's down about a sit five or a six so I could go a little lighter because you got to remember it's going to um, you can even add a little white I'll just model that in there it's going to dry down it's going to dry down at least one value so get it up there a little bit higher here and uh, you'll be happier with it and it looks really really dark here I mean really really light here but it'll dry down so you gotta that's the hardest thing about you know painting perspective and stuff in mountains and so when you put this on you want it just about the same value really as your sky that you're gonna come in here and list this and see it's pretty darn close to the value of the sky just a touch darker and that'll be fine and I'm just going to use my brush like this and see some of those different colors come out of there. Model up a bit. I want it kind of rough here to put in this, this line here. And, um, you know, sometimes I hold my brush very flat like this. And I'll, I'll create the different edges of the mountains here. And around like this and down. And... Then we're going to want this to kind of fade away off over here. Maybe just a little color spot or so, but it starts to fade away over to that side. Go pull it at a different angle, push the brush up. We'll use a little bristle and a little knife here, but how much interest we can actually add in there is going to depend on the, uh, you know, the, the bird. So we might have to do some of our bird before we get there. Now we'll let this come forward as you come forward in a landscape you usually get darker and stuff so let's get some pine green let's take a little bit of our blue a little bit of our burnt sienna here uh this will lighten it just a bit here this color will will change a lot we'll do this many times it's just a real quick uh a kind of a greenish color that's going to come into this area here and uh I might even put a little bit more of that light right in there. And again, I'm just going to model this up here. Small brush movements, move this up and in here. Because what we're going to do, I don't want to um, get a new paper towel here. I don't want to create too much of a line with this color. I want to kind of move these colors and what, we, what I call incorporate these colors together here. So you see a transition of this through the painting here. And then let's just let that just die out, even go out to that edge there like that as a stroke. That's very nice contemporary look there to that here. I want to warm slightly as I come up here. I'm going to take some yellow oxide, a little burnt sienna. Let's get just a little bit of our greens and stuff here. But let's add a, a touch of our purples that I'm using this, this in the, into the mountains and stuff here here just to keep that color going in there and uh, let's bring this up right in here so my plan here is to like 
he's going to be sitting in like a big uh, tall um, uh, pine tree and there'll be some of the other like a little receding hill dropping down here on this side here and then you'll see like the down like a little valley lake and then back up into the mountains that's kind of what I'm envisioning here on this and so I'm just going to go up and down here now a lot of landscape painters and, and I'm one of them that likes to do that too we will we will break so if I, I'm just going to take this off here to this side here if we um, uh, if we're doing a lot of angles here for the mountains then we'll go to do a hill like this a little bit more up and down and push some of the angles here and side to side and let's just let that just fade off of there like that here just almost dry brushy there fade that off and let's get a touch light as well and this is right now all I'm painting for is to get some color some movement we're going to come back and address this issue. This is getting some stuff on here that I'll be able to um, to work on the uh, hawk with. So I have some color, some some ideas for my painting here to be able to relate to with the hawk. For these rocks there, model it up a bit. You know, get some of that nice um, uh, broken color going in there. You know, so this would be the shadow side here, this hill here. Make it hit another little bit of a highlight here, so the highlight would come in there. And uh, sometimes I'll work the shadows for a while, then I'll go work lights, and I'll come back and work shadows again. And out over here, I want this all to fade away, so we'll just let some of that just start fading away here. Let's grab some of that green and yellow little notes in here as well from some of this color taking that up in there and just fade that away a touch there we'll just grab a bit of that that's pretty little color notes there a little extender into that just work that just just like that just kind of model that through and work those colors through little color touches maybe that color just a touch more maybe a touch of yellow here and just put on some of that color and you can see I'm kind of thick and stroking it and step back and take a look yes it's lighter on that mountain okay so you step back you take a look and you go yeah okay it's lighter onto there and the question is do I want to put a you know a mark or two up here you know for some snow hitting right up there and I, I want to keep it loose I want to keep it uh, um, just a little bit uh, you know just hit and miss not perfect little touches of it like there's just a little bit of it here and there little bits you know just hanging on usually it hangs on down towards the valleys off of the so it would be like hanging on down in here into this valley you know it's not up at the tops so it would be hanging right around right where that those that uh, shadow right where the, the shadow is about the contact because that's down towards the valley that little crevice there just a bit you know so there like that find some light and shadow light is coming this way it's on our mountains and everything here it is coming this way um, and uh, I want to so I want to keep light and shadow light and shadow so this will be into light and this will be down into shadow so I'll look down in here let's make some let's make some beautiful grays we've got a key off of our burnt sienna some of these other colors that are going to be right in here uh, some of my violet some of my greens you know when I get to here, I start to look at the color and go, oh, that's that's really kind of a pretty brownish gray color here. Add some white to see it. If I have a lot of my violet or even a red violet and a blue, a purpley kind of color into it, it's cool. And you know it's cool. So I create some kind of purpley color here. It's cool. That pur purpley color can always go into any one of these colors. It can go into burnt sienna. It can go to anything and it creates this this real cool shadowing 
a color that we can use on him. Grab some of all these other colors, the greens, the mountain colors, drop them in there. See how that really grays it more than the purple really there. But that color's cool. You know it's cool because it's got a lot of red violet in it. So it's very cool here. And the values will adjust later. First, what I'm going to do is come down and say, okay, right down in through here, this is going to be the shadow side of him. This is where a lot of, uh, we're going to have some whites and stuff later on, but I want to put in his form shadow here. So it's going to come up right in through here. This is really going to be the shadow. He has a big breast area there. And this is really going to be the form shadow of him here like this. And uh, neck feathers and stuff there so we're going to want to undulate some of that color here as we start some of this down here and the first thing I'm, I'm doing is like um, just like uh, uh, I was painting here on a video yesterday with the birds I like to set up the modeling of the colors now that really advances him off so I'm going to add a little more of that purpley color right into there too and again this is always a real good thing to do to model colors model model your colors you know let's get that purple color just really works well with helping him advance a little bit of that burnt sienna in there just but see, I, I'm and I'm doing, I'm doing that one thing. I want you to always remember is, is the broken color. The broken color, you can have, you know, a shadow can be many tones, so it's very cool. But then some little parts of it can be a little warmer. It's still overall cool. It's like when you go grab grab a glass of water and say, oh, I got a cool glass of water. Well, how cold is that water? Is there ice floating in it? Is it? Just a little bit, uh, you know, more medium temperature, you know. I mean, how cool is cool? It, that's basically what, you know, an artist would be doing with, like, broken color. We'd say, okay, I'm going to come in here. Yeah, I'm working this. This is a shadow side, but it's not just a purple. You know, that purple may have some greens going in it and some other color bands and stuff going in it that is going to make it that way. But here, it gets that beautiful light coming down. Here, down like that. Hey, fun, fun, fun to figure out his shapes. We'll put just a little bit of gray into that there. In the figuring out his shapes and how you're gonna paint him and stuff, and put a little bit of that lighter gray up here onto his head. There. Put in some yellow right in here, okay? And uh, then we need to get this real dark. I'm going to reach up here and grab some of my purple color here, my little purple color, and I want to put that nice predator hook right onto his, his beak here. So, and I just use this chisel of the brush. See, I don't want to get too, too refined yet. But uh, I want to, you know, start popping out a little bit of this on him. Let's get a bit of that uh, violet color and stuff that's going to be a, a little touch of the dark right in here. Here. Maybe a, a little bit more blue into that. That makes it a little darker. There. Right in there like that. Okay. Um, we're, so that's that's kind of where his beak is coming in. We're going to have a gray, and the gray is going to be slightly onto the blue side here. So we'll gray this. We'll get a bit of our grays right into this area here onto the beak. Where those colors kind of come together there. And I might want to restate that yellow one more time. It's really kind of a predominant yellow statement there on him maybe a touch of white into that but like I say when I'm painting like this and painting you know a beautiful bird like this a lot of detail I paint these areas several times and it's like yesterday painting these um, little sparrows I went over and over and over again and it depends on how real you want to make it but I'll go over and over and over several times uh, an area several times um, 
to uh, get the look that I want. Now let's create a cooler little shadow color right in here, right down in here, purpley color, and right into his eye socket, right up in through here, we'll push that cooler shadow color between that yellow and that, that dark tip and that dark tip. Let's use some of that color from his eye here and restate that again. But when I restate it, I don't paint it all out what I did before. You know, I might come in here and, and you know, right into this one area here and hit just a touch of burnt sienna right to there. That coloring starts to go in that beak and starts adding so much to the to the bird. And then we'll put in his lower beak here, just a bit of dark there. But it's a separate stroke and you can you know you can take a little bit of the light here and just track right along and and uh, put on that upper beak but you bring them kind of together there right by his right by his uh, face when they're coming into his face we have a lot to do in there yet but a bit of that light that's going to be hitting right back here And again, you're keeping it modeled here because we still have to, you know, we're building him up. It's kind of like you're you're constructing him here and building him up here. And uh, that was kind of a bad stroke right there. Kind of took away my eye socket there. Gonna have to restate that one. eye socket in there got to keep that nice also I've gotten it um, off round there just a bit on the bottom got to keep that eye round on that bottom and uh, because that is uh, this is really where the interest of the eye is going to come from we state that line I want to open up that, that eye shadow just a bit more here. That's just a little, I want it a little smoother right there. Right like that. That's better. Right in like that. And I want a little bit more of that burnt sienna right along the top part of his head here. Because that's really popping out really nice against that uh, blue there. Against the blue sky. And I want to take Yes, again, a bit of my Darya light there. Tap that there just to bring that eye out one more little time there. And probably one, <laughs> probably one, sorry, probably one more little time later on too. But uh, let's keep building up uh, some of the lights and we'll get some of the, we'll get him up some of his lights. But let's step back here for just a second here. And you'll see, see he's starting to lift off of the, uh, of the painting here. Let's take this up just a bit here. And um, I might go to like my number four here, little number four, and we'll start working some, some more light and some different feathers here on him up onto his body. I like to do these with painted stroke with strokes here and um, here and so we'll uh, pull this down like this painted marks actually just dragging a little bit like here I want to start lightening him up and I can you know one of the things I, I started to do on birds too was use what's called negative painting back and doing feathers so paint back and forth with light. So I don't mind, I don't worry about getting him too light. What I'm doing right now is watching his white chest here, how how white I'm going to build this. And I should keep a little bit of that yellow in there. Don't go to pure white. It's, it's too boring of a tone. You want to have a little bit of yellow into that and stuff. So you got to make sure that you get some of the other kind of grayer tones in there as well. So he just doesn't come too white. There we 
go. Build that up. That's where I like to go back and forth between some lights and some. I really enjoy painting this casual with the uh, long handle brushes. You know, I don't know if I could paint a bird this size really with the small ones. They would really give you a, a bit of a workout. Don't lose the shadow, shadow edges there. You can pull some of that shadow back up like this and incorporate that, see? So put some shadow back into your brush and pull back the other way right up into that then you don't lose that form shadow but now we're starting to bury some of those shadows into the form of the hawk here a light sunshine hit over here onto him so a little dari light into your um into your burnt sienna and then you can knock it down with a little bit of the violet that mountain violet colors there. This is really kind of the perfect colors for the red tail too. Drag a little bit of that up there like that and see it just kind of overrides a little bit of the white there. And see if I go back to add white it kind of takes some of it out a little bit because white's more opaque. You know, white is one of your most opaque colors. That's why I really like to uh, paint detail and stuff with darks and, you know, back up on top of the lights because, you know, it's it's opposite really what you'd think. that the, But the, the dark, I can transparent up and still get a lot of, of depth to it. If I do that to the white, it looks cloudy, and I don't like that look. I should probably put in, I want to put another little, a uh, little bit more detail here on some feathering right up to the front of this wing here so we see it a little bit more that edge right there with that dark um, but I don't want to get that line like that too much next to that other one I want to break this up a bit so let's break that down just a bit there there we go and um, I want a softer gray, maybe a little bit of that blue into that as well. Right here, gray down, this is the end of his body, feathers in here. Right down like that, and maybe a little shadowing up underneath that. Just very sketchy and stuff, but I so I want you to see stuff that's going on there. His body's picking up in there, so we do have to make sure you see some of that. Overall, those grays I made up stayed pretty wet during the we're almost three hours into the painting here, so they stayed pretty wet during the those initial mountain colors all during the painting here. They're just a little sticky now my mountains any darker. I was going to make my mountains a little darker, but he advances so far forward. Really nice. I, I kind of like that. I'm going to just put in like the the idea here. Oh, here's my six right there. I'm going to um, just put in the idea with some burnt sienna here. Just kind of lightly sketch like this is going to be the the bow of the pine of the, the pine here. And I want to put out a, a few um, you know lines of the I want to be very casual and suggestive with this I don't want to be precise at all so when I do that I do a lot of pushing back and forth with the brush like this and um, I'm even going to push one right up here uh, into him and he's just kind of gripping this thing and his feet are going to disappear down into here and uh, you know, we'll put in some other little lines, just movement lines down out here like this. Sometimes a little shadow into it, a few little shadow strokes, like if it, you know, if you have a light side and a shadow side here, that's what I want to be painting here. Let's get this light. Well, here we have a big thing of white right here. 
yellows and greens model this all together here not over mix it too much and just kind of drag that through like that here create some different lines and movements here and out here just very suggestive they're very suggestive there and you know again hit the violet and green as a nice shadow here to um, this side here right in here maybe a little shadow you know the shadows really kind of add a lot to it and you gotta be careful not to add too much it's not a painting of the of a pine needles it's painting of the bird so keep that in mind but pull some of this in and out sometimes use your finger that just gives you a nice look as well lighten it up a bit and come back in and build just a bit more of a light edge to this cloud and make sure you step back and you know you don't want to take away from the bird at all but uh, step back and see if you're getting the effect that you want to to get here I want to build this cloud up just a bit more maybe a bit of my grays here and my blues Right through and I know you just some of you had a heart attack right now but see I like I don't worry about that and I just just push that up by that mountain through a little bit of those grays that'll soften the edge uh, that really what it does is it kind of if I if I take some white like this and right now it's kind of soft if I take some white like this I bring that mountain and paint like a little bit of a cloud right back behind that it brings the mountain forward so I'm looking at the bird and how much power I can afford to give to this mountain here right now and how much I want to bring that forward with a cloud like that a little edge of a cloud right like that and I kind of like that little light back behind the cloud here and uh, laying it in use your uh, edge of your brush to make sure it contours to the to the painting enough but that uh, yeah that adds a lot to it I don't want to add any down in here but right down through that center line right down through there that really pops that off quite a bit I think that's uh, that's pretty good I think really that is kind of you know other than maybe a few other little lights here and there that you might want to have like a but you know you don't want to and that's wrong but you don't want to go too um, too light let this dry down just a bit but I you know you you may want to come in and say oh I want to do all of this stuff in here what's all this and then you'll end up losing the interest of your painting he's the interest of your painting look at him you know um, I am going to go you know probably have another cup of coffee sit down take a look at this and maybe tomorrow I'll come back and look at it one more last time to see any last little thing but I don't think I'll be adding anything to it I kind of like the way I like this real a la prima expression down through there um, you know and, and, and just the real casualness of the movement and stuff that's through there and looking at the monitor I really like this I don't like this uh, looks like a volcano going off there so I'll just push it to the sides a little bit more there like that so give a little bit of a break between those clouds and it won't uh, won't do that too much there we go just lift it right off to the ground there I just love the paint when it's really sticky and you have to just push on it pretty hard there 
to get some of that through there. That that worked out okay. Just a little bit of it through. There like that. Okay? So that's kind of fun. But boy, he really does pop right off. I like the way that looks. I'm going to put it in a darker frame. Probably a frame picking up the colors that are here onto his uh, wing. I'll do that. And you'll see, of course, the photos and stuff like that online. You can go there online and see that. And... Um, you know, uh, there you might, you know, if you want to add another little tree in there or if you're going to cut it off there, you can add a little thing here. But I just kind of like that just following off to the sides there. I don't think I would do anything more than that. You know, I always tell uh, a lot of my students here when you're, you know, your job as a designer and like an artist is to, you know, uh, produce some of these things. And one of the things that, uh, you know, you got to remember is that your job is to create different looks. And so... You know, I always say, yeah, you got a nice look there. So if you want to go, um, you know, add a, uh, um, uh, you know, another something else like another pine tree or something like that, paint another painting and add it. That one's a good look. You don't need to put pine trees on both sides of it, like the, you know, um, like the real quick landscape painters do to create depth. That one doesn't need it to create depth. It already has enough depth uh, here to it. So it doesn't uh, need anything more to that, I don't think. And so, you know, it, if you want to try something else, go do another painting. That's the best thing to always remember. So there he is, your uh, Farraganus Hawk. And uh, I, I even, uh, you know, I was going to put some other different things in snow. I'm just going to leave that because that's enough. That's enough for that, and I enjoy the painting. Thanks very much for joining me. For uh, more videos and stuff, look to us over on jansenartstore.com. Uh, you can always join our online classes at jansenartonline.com where I'm taking you all the way through. And We have flower classes and landscape classes and bird, paint, bird painting classes, stuff there. You can go uh, anytime, join up on there anytime, and... Uh, uh, become part of the, the part of the lessons and oh there's a contact form that's there even if you're not a student there's a contact form that's there and if you just have a question if you hit the contact write that it goes right to me and I'll be happy to answer any of those questions for you at any time okay thanks very much hope you enjoyed it I had a great time I'm gonna go grab a cup of coffee sit down and just look at it that's when you know when you have a good painting you sit down and you just look and look and look and want to look at it alrighty I'll see you later thanks bye bye